we are definitely excited to have you that uh, you, you that are joining us. Um, we have a little bit to share. I think we got about about a half hour, and so we're we'll be going right through some information. And we just want to make sure that you guys have our contact information at the end, so uh, that way you can follow up with us on on any additional questions that you might have. So. Again, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, MSU Bozeman's American Indian Student Success Service. Uh, it's myself and Nick Ross that are here today with us. Um, some talking points that we're going to cover uh, really quickly. Um, we'll fly through some of the stuff. Of course, staff intros, uh, a little bit history of the American Indian Student Success Service, um, our current daily support that we provide on the ground for students here at MSU Bozeman. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about scholarships. We'll talk a little bit about American Indian Council and some other uh, uh, other student clubs that are uh, very active on campus. And then we'll talk about the future um, the American Indian Hall, the, the facility that we got that's being built right now. And so um, exciting times coming up. And then the last thing we'll talk about is the Native Pathways to Success Orientation. And then we'll just wrap it up from there. So some of our key talking points today. Um, and then uh, real quick, uh, my name is Lisa Perry. I am an enrolled Eastern Shoshone tribal member. I come from the Wind River Indian Reservation. I grew up there and I attended the University of Wyoming and got an undergrad there. And then I went on to the uh, Grand Canyon University and uh, earned a master's in business administration. I find myself in Bozeman going on nine years now. So I've been at MSU pretty much the entire time. And so I really enjoyed you know, learning the culture meeting students and you know seeing students graduate and getting across the stage and just excited about you know our future too and so for those of you who are planning or you know potentially planning to come to MSU I'm hopeful that I can work with you uh one-on-one -on -one, however whatever that fashion that looks like so um yeah looking forward to it uh, I'll let Nick introduce himself and then we'll keep moving forward yeah. um as you can see I'm a member of the Yakima Nation I came from a tiny community called uh, White Swan. Um, my entire adult life actually has been spent in, in Bozeman. I was 18. I got accepted to MSU. Um, I earned my undergraduate degree in philosophy. Uh, and just something, as Lisa was talking, I, I just remember uh, the difference, you know, between like a high school graduation, you know, where it's the family, the community, it's, it's a huge celebration. Um, and there's a real sense of pride, but like Lisa was saying, when, once you get to college, you know, it's a, it's a totally different world, it feels like. And I remember walking across that stage and not everyone from home was able to travel uh, the nine hours from Washington to attend. But uh, there, there is a, a great amount of pride. I think you still carry that with you because in the work we do, you know, that's our goal ultimately is to see all the students who come through our doors uh, march across those that stage and because no one can take that away from you. So, um, yeah, I, I love MSU. I, you know, was involved a lot and I'll probably talk about that a little bit, but that's just a little introduction to, to who I am. Yeah, so a couple other positions. I thank you Nick, for uh, writing a little bit of background on yourself. Um, a couple other positions that we have uh, outreach coordinator. Uh, Rita Sand was our outreach coordinator. She would go out and visit the high schools, and um, you know she would get out and you know visit with counselors and visit with different uh, tribal colleges. And so, uh, unfortunately, we we lost her over the summer. She, uh, she just retired, um, and so she's you know in retirement life, enjoying her grandchildren. And so, it, it, you know, we have some big shoes to fill uh, with Rita. And so, I think several of you know the guidance counselors probably remember communicating with her and that kind of thing. So. Um, I'm hopeful that we can get that position filled in the next year, and so I'm um, hopeful that you know we can get another uh, rep going out, you know, from our office to the uh, Indian Country in, in Montana and, and regionally. So I'm uh, looking forward to that. And then also uh, Holly Oldcrow is our student assistant here in the office, and so she helps us on the ground with different coordination, uh, different types of um, just whatever comes up. She's there. She's from the Crow Tribe. Uh, from a Crow Indian Reservation, she's actually looking to go to law school, so we're rooting for her and hopeful that you know she can get into a good law school here in the next year or so. So, um, you know, good things happening in our office, and we got lots of lots of um, you know um, great things to look forward to. And so, I think next we're going to talk a little bit about the history of the American Indian State Support Service, and uh, I'll let Nick jump in and he can share uh, his his perspective and his, his um, knowledge about the history. Yeah. So uh, originally, um, when the conversation started to be had about, you know, how, how are we, how is MSU as a whole best serving or, or trying to connect with our, our native student body? 
the conversation started back in the in the uh, late 1960s going into the 1970s um and that was an interesting interesting time in history in general but especially for for native peoples where we were starting to regain a lot of the uh, tribal uh, identity sovereignty you know the, our a lot of our people are like Lisa and I, a lot of our probably grandparents and parents or uncles and aunts were really starting to, to push, you know, uh, Indian rights and, and activism. And when it came to MSU, luckily at the time, I think the president was uh, William Teats. Um, he really wanted there to be a show of force and commitment to not only MSU, but to the tribal communities. And so, you know, he helped lead the tribal college movement in Montana, but uh, when when the when it came down to look at what what are we doing here at MSU, um, you know, Native American Studies as a discipline really was just uh, in its infancy. And at the time in 1974, I believe when the student opened at MSU, there were only six Native students on campus, and this was a time where where like trade school or, or certain skills. Uh, uh, arts, you know, craft skills were really a thing. Um, you know, nursing may have been a thing because Native people have always been, you know, drawn to the health profession, but there were only six. And they originally tried to house this, uh, the Native Student Support Services under international programs. Um, and you think about that, that hiding irony, right, of the First Nations, the Indigenous peoples' this land being housed under, you know, uh, another office like international programs. Well, then from there, they moved uh, the office under anthropology because again, NES really was, uh, It's although it's an interdisciplinary um, program, it really, we didn't have that launch. So simultaneously, the, the Center for Native American Studies was, you know, was kind of birth of this idea um, and, you know, like least of the work we do like this, we work, we focus on recruitment, uh, retention, recruitment being what Rita, you know, Rita San was primarily doing, retention, what Lisa and I and Holly do day to day, uh, and, and just graduating, which we already kind of hit on. And here, uh, the picture on the left is Dan Voich. He's a non-native guy, um, but he had such a heart and a passion for, for uh, the vision for what this program, you know, could be an event, and it is uh, because of a lot of the hard work he uh, put into it. He was the uh, advisor, the director for 30 years, uh, and in the almost 50 years we've been in existence, uh, we had five directors. Uh, the really cool thing, Lisa, is the first woman to hold the position, um, and there's just the longevity uh, to to the to the work. Um, and at least, and I often say, like, we're off. We're we're used. We're we're a model here at MSU for for a lot of different programs across the country. I know we have Harvard, Yale, Stanford. You know, Dartmouth. You know, schools from all over North Dakota. You know, asking like, hey, how are you guys doing this? Um, and so a lot of times, I know that's a lot of the conversations Lisa has is how how are we connecting with our students? How are we connecting with the community? And so that's maybe just a little history of of our office. So. Great, thank you, Nick. And I know he, uh, Nick already started talking about some of the services that we provide on the ground currently. And so I think a lot of the, you know, what we provide now is, you know, historically, uh, you know, built up to, you know, where we're at now. As you guys see in the numbers, you know, we, we have well, you know, close to 700 plus Native students. And so, you know, for me and Nick to be on the ground, uh, it, it get, can get a little overwhelming. Our, our staff to student ratio uh, is, is not the greatest, but I think just us being available, our door is always open for students to, you know, come in if they have any questions, concerns. Nick and I are, are you know, we're here on the on the ground working. Our ears are open. We're always trying to do what we can. As you guys can see, the top left is currently our, our space right now. There's tables available for students to come in, study. Uh, you know, they can get tutoring services. I'll let Nick talk a little bit more about the tutoring services. Um, but then I think the main thing is, you know, we have a space, a home away from home for our students to come in and and really, um, you know, make themselves at home comfortable, you know, pull out your study material. You can, you know, sit there for as long as you need to to get through the content. Um, and it's free printing. There's free printing in our student center, which is huge. If you go to the library or any other center, you have to pay for printing. So if you come here, it's free printing. You can print out what, whatever you need. We have uh, desktops that you can, um, you know, dump on. We also have laptops that you can check out for the semester. 
Um, again, you know, a lot of the stuff that we deal with is not just academic stuff. You know, we deal with, uh, you know, I need I need help getting, uh, you know, babysitting. I need daycare. I need uh, help finding a place to live. I need, um, you know, any resources uh, that we have available, uh, whether that's uh, connecting with the local school districts or you know, just anything that we can help students with. Um, we try to connect students with, uh, you know, just about everything that we can in, in, in any fashion. You know, we have connections across campus. Financial aid, uh, admissions. We work closely closely with admissions, the registrar's office, of course, other support entities around campus, caring for our, our own program, which is the nursing program. I know that's a really popular one in Indian country because um, they do so much for their nursing students. And so we work closely with them. Trio, we work closely with Trio. Gear up, we work closely with Gear up. Um, so we do a lot of great things on the ground, and you know we do um, you know workshops. So as you guys can see in the top right photo, there's a workshop. That has to do with like time management. We had a tribal member come in and she shared um, uh, some some of her uh, uh, planner planner uh, literally a planner and was able to help students get a planner together so they could you know better time manage and and, and create you know a, a schedule for themselves. And so those kinds of things are really cool. And uh, it's it's just you know uh, what what services do you need as a student? We can help. And so I just want you guys to know that. You can come to us at any moment in time and just say, hey, I need help. I don't know what's going on or I have questions or can you help me connect better with my faculty or my instructors? We can help facilitate some of those conversations too. So I'll let Nick talk a little bit about the tutoring services and some of the other uh, uh, services that we provide for uh, the campus and community. Yeah, um, so, you know, I like to, you know, personal connection. So I, I was, um, a foster care i aged out of the foster care system i kind of just went full bore ahead when i came to college uh th there was so much about university life campus life that I, I didn't know like how to find my own housing like lisa's saying like how to find my housing uh and you know i had to pick a major right i kind of didn't really i really didn't know what that meant um and so, you know working with uh all the tribes and reservations here in montana and from the region you know, we, we have a lot of students who, who come from different backgrounds. Uh, some of the kids, a lot of the kids come, students come from public schools or, you know, some kids come from boarding schools, which is fine. Or some, we have a, a healthy amount that transfer in from travel colleges or other schools. And so, you know, you think of, you know, the resilience, uh, you know, I had, that Lisa had, uh, the resilience that our students have sometimes something like tutoring you know because you know we're, we're achievers right we, we obviously we finish high school but when they come here these classes can be demanding and sometimes you know our public schools or boarding schools are just uh they there's an achievement we call it achievement and preparation gap it's, so it's not a it's not a question of whether a student is intelligent or capable enough to, to do the work it's just sometimes you know they we need the extra hand and so the the middle picture down in the bottom here is is really a, a collision of, of two worlds uh the older student on the left in the plaid that's uh, dan reyes dan and i are the same age and so dan actually had an awareness at a young age like you know he graduated high school and he's like maybe the, the the military is the best fit for me you know it's the structure it's the discipline i need so he, he went into the Marine Corps and he actually served a tour, I think, in Afghanistan. Um, so that's Dan. Uh, the, the, the blonde kid on the right, his name is Max. Max he launched and, and kind of helped uh, found our, our current tutoring program. And Max, Max comes from privilege. He was a boat through and through. Point oh, one of like the 15, I think, Val Victorians of Bozeman High. He, he came in as a presidential scholar. Um, but he, he just had a real heart. He, he listened to, to uh, Lisa present one time and he's like, you know, maybe there's some way I can serve. And so through Max's work, you know, we, it was a very practical thing. Like tutoring is, is a need and Max and now seven other tutors or six other tutors or seven all together. Uh, they tutor, you know, physics, math, chemistry, biology, um, and all this stuff. And so th their friendship actually grew. And I, I would, I'll just try to tell the story quickly. We, you know, we do community engagement type stuff. Um, and we had a, a bingo night. And Max, you know, he was the only blonde kid in the room, room full of 
you know, uh, you know, native students. And Max was really competitive. He was really getting into it. And the prize that night was a crock pot. Well, Max ended up not winning, but he, he really wanted it. And, you know, he and Dan had connected once or twice. You know, he helped uh, Max had tutor uh, Dan because Dan's an engineering student. And um, Dan just, you know, really took to, they took to each other. And so the next morning, Dan and his wife um, show up and they have a brand new crock pot. Uh, it's for Max. And so that's just kind of the, the relationship. That's kind of our approach and how we work student success. And then, you know, all some of the other, like Lisa said, some um, the bottom right. You know, you think of uh, the ancestors or, you know, a lot of our, you know, people in the past, you know, to really took pride in the upkeep. And so we do like things like fashion, you know, that this is a fashion show. Uh, we had some prominent Montana designers, designs by Della, Olympic Hair Stump, uh, Carrie Moran McC McCleary. Uh, you know, that's stuff we do. Uh, it was really cool this last October on Indigenous People Indigenous Peoples Day. We were actually able to bring in Joy Harjo, the U.S. Poet Laureate, and a tribal member from Oklahoma. So we we do a lot because we want uh, you know the work we do to reflect you know contemporary Indian life. You know, and some of our students and Lisa and I could look forward to. And so that's just a little bit about some of this uh, programming and stuff that we do. Great, thanks, Nick. I know we have a. Uh, about 13 minutes left, so we're going to try to get through some of the couple of next slides um, as, as, I guess, as smoothly as possible. Uh, a couple of things that uh, we want to talk about, too, is the internal scholarships that are available and then the external scholarships that are available. Um, and so when you when you apply to MSU and you get accepted, you can already start applying to the CAT scholarship portal. And so this is an internal portal that can bring scholarships that are offered within our community, within each each um, say, for example, you are going into engineering, you can go into the CAT scholarship portal, fill out this one portal and it has like five blocks of information, and then it should be bringing scholarships to you. If you mark American Indian on there, um, it'll start bringing scholarships to you that you're at that, that you could apply for. And so the CAT scholarship is really important. Once you get accepted to MSU, you can start applying for that. There's several department scholarships that I think that are brought to you through this CAT scholarship portal. For example, the Caring for Our Own program, which is a huge uh, scholarship opportunity for students who are interested in nursing. But again, there's all these other scholarships that are available to you. All you have to do is, you know, just make sure that you're applying, make sure you're getting out there and looking for them. Again, Nick and I can help you facilitate, or at least, you know, connect with some of these internal scholarships. A couple of other things, I'm hopeful that your counselors, if you're coming from, uh, you know, a high school, um, that they're connecting you if you're graduating from a, a, a Montana high school. That you're taking advantage of the Montana Indian fee waiver, which basically takes off your uh, uh, your, your your tuition, and so it leaves you with your fees. And so that's a huge advantage. So if you are an enrolled tribal member or a descendant, you just have to get your paperwork sent in to the financial aid office, and you can take advantage of the Montana Indian fee waiver. So keep that on back of your mind. If you are graduating from a Montana high school, or you're enrolled or descendant from Montana, you can take advantage of that. Um, if you're graduating or you're coming from an out-of-state um, uh, tribe uh, and you're, uh, you know, basically from the region or if you can prove that your tribe was once a, um, a, a tribe that uh, came across Montana in some sort of fashion or, you know, came here uh, through, through, you know, hunting or um, some sort of uh, trails or anything like that, if you can prove that, um, there's opportunity for you to take advantage of the Tribal Homeland Scholarship Waiver. Like, I'm I'm enrolled Eastern Shoshone from Wyoming, and I'm able to take advantage of the uh, Tribal Homeland Scholarship. And there's several tribes from Dakotas, Wyoming, uh, Idaho, uh, just the region. And so if you can prove that your tribe was once here in Montana, we can um, get you the Tribal Homeland Scholarship Waiver. So, again, that's really a good opportunity to take your out-of-state tuition, reduces it to in-state tuition. So. Keep that in mind. Uh, external scholarships, as you guys know, um, you know it's it's the time that you take to put into these external scholarships is well worth it. And so, look into your tribal higher education departments. If you're a Crow, Blackfeet, Cheyenne tribe, wherever you might be, make sure you're looking into your tribal higher education departments. They have funding that's available for you. We're routinely getting people from each uh, higher ed department that come and visit with their students. So it's, Usually semesterly to check up on how they're doing, getting them checks, you know, sending checks, and making sure that they're taken care of, whether that's books, scholarships, uh, book scholarships, um, you know, helping with their tuition and fees. 
So again, tribal higher education departments are really, really helpful. Um, again, some other external, make sure you're looking into the Cobell Scholarship. That's a huge one. A lot of our uh, current students are at Cobell Scholars, and so that's a, that's a really good advantage for you. And there's other ones like the American Indian College Fund, the American Indian Education Foundation. Those are some different um, you know, external, but there's a whole lot out there. It's just going to take time for you to sit down and um, you know research. Get one good essay, and you can tweak that however you need it to and fit into each different um, scholarship that you apply for. We actually have a scholarship list that um, is kind of already, uh, for the most part, on the, the research. Uh, we have a list and it has live links, so if you want access to that list, maybe shoot me an email, shoot Nick an email, and we can get you that scholarship list. And those are, uh, majority of those are external scholarships. Um, and so keep that in mind, uh, and then we'll just uh, uh, try to connect uh, at some point in time. So again, if you're not, if you're not uh, dead on coming to MSU, or you're not really dead set on that, um, you can still use that list for other universities or other colleges that you decide to attend. So we're not, um, we're not stingy about the list, but you just have to take advantage of it wherever you end up. So, um, uh, Nick, you want to talk a little bit about the American Indian Council and then other social? Yeah. Yeah. So the American Indian Council is, um, is one of the oldest, uh, organizations at MSU. Um, you think about uh, the hit, a lot of the history of this student group in particular has a lot to do with uh, families. Uh, we have a lot of non-traditional students. And through the years, I, I think, uh, you know, we've had uh, older students really take on leadership positions. Um, you know, it's not uncommon for, for children, high schoolers, smaller kids to be at the functions and events. We do barbecues at, and we, this group you know, actually thinks a lot about, you know, what does it mean to have that, that home feel from, you know, back home in the res or, you know, this thing or Great Falls or Missoula. And they, you know, we bring, we try to bring that sense of community here. And so, you know, um, you know, they do barbecues, like I said, barbecues. Uh, next week we're doing a study night. Uh, we there's a couple of cool opportunities. Uh, we partnered with the NCAA Athletics cat football team to do a presentation for American Indian Heritage Day. Uh, we have a, an athlete on the women's basketball team. She's a Crow tribal member, and uh, we were able to help promote and bring awareness to um, MMIWG. And I think we actually had a, a Indian Indian club, from, I think Lodgegrass, come up for that. And so it's, it is leadership development. It's, it's really fun, a lot of energy. Uh, Lisa and I are co-advisors. And then there are some other student groups, like uh, we have ACES, uh, who's you know more in the STEM field, uh, Nations, which is faith-based, uh, uh, MMIWG Club, which I think may be a little inactive, um, uh, SAGES, which is our, our graduate students uh, club. And so, we value, we encourage that social and connection engagement as much balance to the academic um, academic excellence and success that we, we want all our students, you know, they want them to feel like MSU is their home. And so the AIC really helps do that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun stuff. I, I, I think that's the most, I don't want to say the most enjoyable part of my uh, being part of MSU, but I think it is, you know, memory making. I think that's the biggest part of it is like thinking about that and you know, the homecoming parade and, you know, those kinds of fun things. So, um, yeah, a lot of good things happening. So, I think, you know, kind of moving forward, when we think about what's happening in the next year, I mean, literally like the next year, at this time next year, we will be in a brand new $21 million facility and uh, it's, it's Right now, it's called the American Indian Hall. We're trying to find a name for that. I actually sit on a committee that is um, trying to find uh, the name to, you know, kind of make it the, feel a little bit more welcoming than the American Indian Hall. So we got that kind of in the works. But if you look at these photos, you know, this has been a long time coming. It's literally like going up right now. There's people over there working on it. And so, you know, it's been a, a journey uh, to, to make this, you know, come to fruition. We had, you know, a couple of students that were architecture, an architecture student, and um, I, I can't believe, uh, I believe he was an engineering student, maybe, um, but they were classmates, and so they want, they had this vision of, you know, uh, American Indian students need a place to call home, and so they drafted up this blueprint, and um, you know, ever since, you know, the early 90s, when they came up with that idea, you know, it's kind of, it's grew, it's grew into, you know, this actual, uh, you know, fundraising platform, and so over the years, since the early 90s, there's been over 100 donors that have given to make this facility a reality. And so in the last couple of years, we got, you know, the $12 million, um, the, the, the huge uh, 
grant or the huge fund from the uh, Candida Fund, which really promoted this, you know, just kind of uh, pushed it along. And so we're really thankful that this is actually coming to you know reality reality now. And so um, this time next year, you know, if you're coming to MSU, if you decide to attend in the next year or two, you're going to help us move into this facility. You're going to help us make it home. And you're going to help us make sure that we're you know, uh, serving the students right. There's going to be three large classrooms in there. There's going to be, you know, study space, a nice big study space for students. There's going to be a kitchen. Uh, there's going to be a, a drum room. There's going to be like a multi-purpose room in there. Of course, the Native Studies Department will be in the top level. And so we have a lot of good things looking, you know, at this, uh, looking forward. And so I think, you know, again, like if you're deciding to come to MSU in the next year or two, or if you're sure this place is, you know, happening for you. And so I'm hopeful that you can you know, help us transition into this uh, facility. Right now, we got a really tiny room, but we're moving into this brand new facility. So I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, we got lots of good things uh, coming our way. And so MSU has done a really nice job in, you know, advocating and supporting their indigenous students. And so this is this is one way that you can tell that MSU really cares about their native students. And so, uh, yeah, it's our future home away from home. Really looking forward to it. Nick, you want to talk about native pathways? Yeah, and so Native Pathways uh, to Success is a supplemental orientation, but really, um, it, it's a, a pretty uh, well, pretty critical piece to, to a much larger uh, puzzle and, and how it all fits together. Uh, when students are accepted to MSU and, and they make the commitment to come here, everyone is uh, required to attend the one of the uh, regular bigger orientations. Um, we love admissions. They do great. They do great work over there. They actually uh, they love. They're always on the lookout for native students, and they'll, they'll often connect with Lisa and I to let us know that you know we have a group on campus. They want they want to connect. But Native Pathways is really um, you know a, an opportunity for for Lisa and I, our our office, to really put our, our best foot forward and say you know this is how much you know one how excited we are that you're coming to MSU and here's why. And you know, the, the programming is geared toward connecting you faces and names it can feel a little overwhelming. Um, it's usually a full day or two and we bring in, you know, speakers and, you know, connect you to offices, but um, the president, President uh, Crusado herself makes it a priority to, to stop, stop in and, and welcome uh, every uh, Native Pathways incoming class, and it's not just you know traditional you know high school graduating seniors. It's it can be older students, transfer uh, travel college transfer students, and you know part of it is the move in accommodation. Uh, it's a little uh, looks a little different now with COVID, but you know it's it's opportunity for for you to be in a space with other Native students. You know students who who come from similar communities are the same community, same high schools uh, sometimes even. But ultimately, you know, it's just a, a picture of, of our commitment as a university as a whole to you when you come in. Because um, you think about it, you know, it, it's a big institution. We're, we're making a, a, you know, you're making a big uh, transition. And, you know, if we could think back through the different classes of, of, of Native Pathways, we actually have, uh, we have Truman Scholars. Uh, we have Gates Cambridge Scholars. We have Civic Newman, you know, fellows uh, and students. If you were to ask them, maybe if they were being honest, sitting in that chair in Native Pathways, they probably couldn't envision that, you know, in four or five years has now passed. They've gotten connected through, you know, the AIC, through our office, through different research opportunities. And, you know, just like I was this kid, you know, this kid from the res or, you know, this kid from Billings, Great Falls, Missoula, and now, just look at all the great people I've met and all the great opportunities. So I think uh, Native Pathways helps to kind of, you know, introduce that world and kind of facilitate that. So uh, at least if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, I just think it's a great way for you to start building your community right from the get go. It, you know, it helps you get acquainted and just, you know, get you going. So if you decide to come to MSU, look for our notice about Native Pathways success orientation and send out emails, postcards, and, uh, you know, we just try to connect via social media and all that stuff too. So be on the lookout for Native Pathways from our, our, our office. So um, take time to you know sign up and get ready for that. So um, I guess just kind of moving forward, we, we're over about a minute, but I do want to uh, give you guys the opportunity to take a picture of our, our emails and our contact info and 
If you have any questions or comments, please reach out. I mean, you could look us up online too. You can just jump on MSU's website and look for American Union Student Success. Find our webpage and look, get our contact info that way too. But just make sure that you're reaching out if you have questions. You know, there's there, we can help with just about anything. So make sure you're reaching out and you're connecting with us. And you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that you'll choose MSU and you'll be here at some point in time so we can help you. Uh, you know, get acclimated and get going in your academic journey, but we're here to help in, in any phase of your life. So, um, yeah, we look forward to everything. Thank you for taking time today and, uh, um, you know, spending a little bit of time with us today. So hopefully we'll see you here down the road.